All right, so I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Autofocus in cameras nowadays are really good. They're really useful tools in your camera and they're great, especially when you wanna track somebody at the eye to make sure things are in sharp or you wanna keep focus on an object. And generally speaking, there's a lot of use cases that autofocus makes a lot of sense. But I still think there's a place for manual focus. And as filmmakers and cinematographers, this is one of the skills that we need in our toolkit to actually dial in our focus because we wanna control how the story's being told. And we might not wanna leave that up to our camera. So in today's video, we're actually gonna go through five tips to get better manual focus. Now I'm gonna try to get this done in five minutes, but I talk a lot, so it might take a little bit longer than that. Now tip number one is mark it, and that just means that you actually can mark your manual focus in and out points. Generally speaking, if there's someone walking around in a scene, you have a point that you're gonna start with in your focus and one that it's going to end with. And you could do this by leaving small landmarks around in your set to make sure that you're focusing to it, or you could actually use things like the markings on your cinema lenses if you guys have access to them. Now on top of that, if you wanna mark your in and your out points, you could use something like like this. Now this is a follow focus by Tilta and it's not just any follow focus that you can get cheaply on Amazon but a feature that I like is that it has little in and out points and I mentioned this on the channel before but if you set your in and out points for your scene what ends up happening is that you won't undershoot or overshoot your focus you'll always stay in the range in which you need to and you can always find your way between the two points to make sure that all your images are sharp. Number two and a lot of cameras with video centric features have this and it's focus peaking. Now focus peaking is great because it leaves you a very clear outline to find out if you have the things that you need to be focused in focus. Now based on your situation you could actually change the color of your focus peaking line. Now for me personally I use red because it's something that I can find very easily and you could actually change the intensity of those lines to make sure that the things that you need in critical focus are especially if it might be hard to see on a small LCD screen or on the back of your camera. Now number three is actually going to be stop down your aperture. Now, a lot of lenses nowadays have f1.8, 1.4, or even 1.2. Those are great, and it gives you that nice creamy background, and it lets in a lot of light. But what ends up happening down the line is that manual focus becomes difficult. When you have such a low aperture, you only have a very thin plane of focus. So, so dialing in details that you need for your image becomes a lot more difficult. Now, something I recommend doing is actually stopping down your lens a couple of stops and adjusting your exposure. When you do that, what's gonna end up happening is that the plane of focus is going to expand a little bit so you can get the details that you need to while you're manual focusing, and it makes it a lot harder to miss your focus. Now, I understand a lot of people wanna have that blurred out, creamy background, and in your films, it has a time and a place, but if you're looking for more compression, you're looking to blur out that background, maybe you might wanna consider using tighter focal lengths. Things like 50 millimeters or 85 millimeters is going to have a natural compression, so even when you're stopping down to lower apertures, you're still going to have that depth of field you're looking for. Number four, and this is especially if you're using photography lenses like G Master lenses or the Tamron lenses on your Sony camera, but you wanna chill on the actual rotation of your manual focus. Now this is my 50 millimeter G Master, and it is a great lens, and it does have a manual focus ring, but the rotation radius for it is a little bit smaller than something on a cinema lens. Basically what that means is that each little rotation of the ring, it can make some really big changes in how I dial my focus in. And if you're somebody that's constantly going back and forth on the ring of your focus, you're always gonna find it hard to dial in your manual focus. Because it has such a small radius, little increments can mean a big change. And this is why cinema lenses like the DZO Vespid Primes are really handy in that regard. If you're somebody that manual focuses, you want a longer range that you could actually turn the wheel and dial in your settings. That way, if you make really small adjustments, it doesn't completely throw off your focus and the transitions look a lot more natural. Now, when you're turning on your manual focus, it's called a focus throw and it's measured in degrees. And essentially, the longer the focus throw it is, the easier it's going to be for you to dial in your images while you're manual focusing. And number five, it's honestly not the most sexy thing in the world, but practice. As cinematographers and filmmakers, when you're operating on camera, there's a lot of tactile and physical skills that you need to acquire in your journey. Just like you would when you're shooting handheld, learning how to manual focus and dial things in and being able to get a feel for what things are in focus, what things are close to you or what things are far for you to get things sharp is something that's going to require a lot of practice. Now we can watch all the tutorials, we can watch everything on YouTube about manual focus, but if you're not out and actually testing it and practicing, it's gonna be a really difficult challenge for you and it's something that you might not be able to pick up just by watching someone else do it. Getting a couple test shots with your subject might actually function as a warm up for manual focusing, especially when you're working with client projects and you're in the field. Hopefully I didn't take too much time explaining how to get better manual focus. Now autofocus and cameras are great, and in fact I'm using it right now, but there is still a place for you to shoot things in manual, control 
the story, control your images, because if you leave it up to your camera, well, they don't know you too well and they might get it wrong. That being said, if you do like videos just like these, leave a comment down below. Are you somebody that's team autofocus or are you team manual focus? Like an adult. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.